In this video, we'll make this adorable character, and then we'll add in some shadows. This will be nice and simple, so let's get started. As I create this design, I'll be sampling these colors right here. If you'd like to use the same colors as me, I've left a download link in the video description where you can download this swatch. Okay, to start, let's make the head. I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool, so I'm going to go over here to our shapes. I'll click on this little triangle to open them up, and then I'll go to the rounded rectangle. I'll click and drag out a shape that's a little bit longer than a square. Alright, and then I'm going to change the color, so I'll grab the color picker, and I'm just going to select this top color right here. I'll apply it. Then I'll go to our stroke color, and I'll remove the stroke by clicking right here. Alright, so we should be left with just the peach colored head. I'm going to grab the move tool, and I'm just going to make sure this is centered. But to do that, we first need to turn on snapping. I'll click on that right up here, and then I'll center it. Alright, next let's add on some facial features. We'll start with the eyes. I'll grab the ellipse tool, and then I'll click and drag while holding shift to draw one of the eyes. I'm going to make this eye this dark brown color. There we go. And then I'm going to use the move tool, and I'm going to duplicate this while holding command or control and shift. Command or control will duplicate it, while holding shift keeps it perfectly in line with the original shape. Alright, once you like the spacing of those, go ahead and select both of these layers by holding shift and clicking. And then I'm just going to click and drag until they're centered, just like that. Next, I'm going to add the nose, and let's just select the triangle tool. I'll zoom in here, and then I'm going to click and drag to make a nice flat little triangle like that. Using the move tool, I'll just make sure this is nice and centered. And then I'm going to apply this pink color. Alright, I think this looks pretty good, but I want the eyes to be spaced out a little more. So I'm just going to hold shift and move one of the eyes out just a little bit. I'll select both of these layers, and then I'll make sure they're centered again. Alright, that looks better. Next, I'm going to add in our mouth. To make it look like a smiling, happy little mouth, I'm going to use the crescent tool. I'll click and drag out a crescent right over here, and then I'm going to rotate it while holding shift to make sure it lines up perfectly like that, 90 degrees from where it started. Then I'm just going to center this mouth right here, I'll make it a little bit wider, and if you'd like, you can also adjust these orange handles to make it smaller or bigger. I think I'll make mine a little bit smaller, and then I'll just make sure it's nice and centered. For the mouth, I'm going to use the brown color again, so I'll just sample that and apply it. Alright, we're doing really nice. Now, at this point, you might be looking at the face and be thinking, hmm, that looks really squished down and low on the head. And you'd be right. <laughs> This is a technique I like to use to add a little bit more cuteness and youthfulness to my characters, just squishing down the faces and bringing them really low. If you wanted your character to look a little bit older or more mature, I would probably raise these features and spread them out just a little bit more. But for this design, I do like the placement, so I'm just going to leave it like this. Now that we have the main features of the face all done, I want to move on to adding our ears. I'll grab the ellipse tool, and then I'll click and drag while holding shift. I want this ellipse to be the same color as our skin, so I'm going to grab that peach color and I'll apply that. Then I'm going to use the move tool to place this on the head. I want this to be a little bit beneath the eyes, about like that, and overlapping with the head just a little bit. To make this ear look more realistic, I want to add a bit of an inner ear shadow. To do this, I'm just going to grab the ellipse tool again, and then I'll hold down shift to make a smaller circle. I'm just going to drag this right up here, and place it in the ear. Then I'm going to make this a little bit of a deeper color, like that. 
Okay, I think I like how that's placed. To keep our layers organized, I'm just going to make this a child layer to the ear. And then I'm going to drag this ear so it's underneath the head. That way the ear is just tucked away. Okay, I want to duplicate this ear for the other side, so I'll hold down Command or Control and Shift, and then I'll click and drag to bring it over. The shadow needs to be on the other side though, so I'll come right up here and flip it horizontally. Alright, once I like how that's placed, I'm just going to select both of these ears, and then I'm going to make sure they're centered. That way we know they're spaced perfectly on both sides. Alright, the next step is adding in our hair. I'm going to start by grabbing the ellipse tool, and while holding shift, I'm going to drag out a nice big circle. I'm going to make this circle this pink color. I'll apply that and then I'll drag the hair beneath everything. <laughs> there we go, and now I'm just going to raise this up, and you can see we have a nice base for our hair. I want to add even more hair to the top of his head, and I want this hair to look a little bit fluffy and curly, so to do this, I'm going to add multiple ellipses just to give us that texture. I'll hold down shift and I'll click and drag to make our first one and then I'll place that here. Now I want this circle to overlap with his forehead, so I'm going to raise this up so it's on top of everything. All right, there we go. Then I'm going to grab the move tool and while holding command or control, I'm just going to duplicate this a few times. So holding command or control. All right, now I have five circles. I'm just going to adjust their sizes to give this a little bit more style. I'll hold shift to make this one a bit smaller on this side. I'll hold shift again to resize this one and make it larger. All right, and there we go. I think I like that shape. Now, as I was adjusting these, I was making sure that I didn't have any leftover areas like this where you could see the circle behind it. I think that flat area just looks a little weird. So you can see, just looking around the outline, we only have those fluffy circles going all the way around. Okay, this looks so cute so far. The next thing I want to do is add in some glasses to our character. I'm going to use the ellipse tool, and I'll hold down shift to make a perfect circle right there. Now for our glasses, I'm actually going to say I want no fill, and then I'm going to change the stroke color to this dark red. I'll apply that, but as you can see, it's very thin, so we're going to go over to our stroke panel, and I'll just increase the width here. I think that looks pretty good. Then, using the move tool, I'm just going to reposition this. I want this to fully cover the eye, but I don't want it to touch the nose or mouth. I want it to hover just a little bit. I'm having a bit of trouble with the placement, so I'm just going to turn off snapping so I can get it placed right where I want it. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to turn on snapping, and then I'm going to duplicate this lens to the other side by holding Command or Control and Shift. All right, that looks pretty good. I'll just select both of these lenses and I'll make sure they're centered. All right, very nice. And next, I'm going to connect the glasses using the crescent tool. I'll select that, I'll click and drag out a crescent, and then over in the color panel, I'm just going to switch these. I don't want there to be a stroke, but I do want there to be a fill, so I'll click right here. Perfect. Then I'll hold down shift to rotate this, and place it. I don't want this to actually touch the nose, I want it hovering over it, and I think that looks pretty good. Next, I want the lenses to be a little bit more realistic. And to do that, I'm just going to select both of them while holding shift. And then I'm going to go to their fill color and I'm going to make this white. Now to make these lenses look transparent, we could lower the opacity of these layers. But as you can see, now the frames around the lenses are looking more transparent. I don't want that. I'll raise the opacity back up, and instead, I'm going to go to the color panel. With the white fill layer selected, I can change the opacity of just the fill by clicking and dragging on this slider right here. 
All right, that looks pretty good. You can adjust the opacity as much as you want for the lenses. And as a added little trick here, if you don't like how milky white the eyes are becoming, you can actually just raise them so that they're sitting on top of the glasses. It's not quite as realistic, but now the eyes just pop a little bit more. Okay, we're almost done. I think I just want to make a little bit of an adjustment to my little character here. I don't like how the glasses are touching the hair. I'd like the hair to be raised a little bit more. So I'm going to select all of these circles. Then I'll just raise them up. Okay, that looks better. Now we're ready to move on to our next step, which is adding shading. For this trick, I'm going to select the head, and I'm going to use a technique where I use duplicate copies of the head to create the shading. So to start off, I'll press Command or Control J, and I'll do that twice, so we have two copies of the head. Using the top copy, I'm going to use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move it up and over, I'll hold shift and just use the arrow keys to move it up. And then I'll use the right arrow key to move it over. Now you can see we've created a bit of a gap here. I'll select both of these rectangles and I'm going to make them a deeper color. Actually, I think I'm just going to sample the color that's in the inner ear and I'll apply that. And now with both of those rectangles selected, I'm going to go right up here and use the subtract operation. This will remove the top layer from the bottom one. So you can see we just have this little sliver left behind, which is adding some nice shading. I'm going to use the same technique to add shading to our hair. I'll select all of these circles, and first I'm going to add them all together using the add operation to make them all one shape. Then with that layer still selected, I'm going to press Command or Control J twice. I'll use this top layer and I'm just going to move it up. And I'll move it over once. And then I'm going to select both of these layers and I'll make them a darker color. Then with them still selected, I'll use the subtract operation. As you can see, we're left with this nice shading here. Unfortunately, we have this extra sliver right here of shading, but this is actually really easy to remove. Just select the shading layer, then select any shape, and trace the shape on top of that sliver. Then you can select both layers and use the subtract operation to remove it. Alright, and just like that, we've added all of our shading. Here's the before and after of that. Alright, and with that, we're done creating this adorable character. Now you can use these same techniques to make your own. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.